guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am kicking off my Beauty Basics series. This is really exciting for me because this has been highly requested both by people in my real life and people on YouTube and people from my blog. A lot of people out there are really curious about makeup but feel overwhelmed in terms of getting started. They don't really know how to approach uh, foundation or eyeshadow or wing liner. So I wanted to create this series to break down makeup application from the very beginning, from how you pick out what products to buy, what tools to use, how you apply the products, basically everything you need to get started so that way you don't feel like overwhelmed by the idea of makeup. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering face makeup, specifically the base that you're gonna be putting all of your color cosmetics on top of. So primer, foundation, concealer, and powder. So this is gonna be a long one and there's gonna be a ton of detail in this video. So make sure you go grab a notebook, grab a cup of coffee, get comfy, because we've got a lot of stuff to go over. So the first step when you're doing your face makeup is usually primer. Now, primer is one of those products that a lot of people have confusion over. They either wonder if it's like a totally necessary step. Is it gonna make my makeup look heavy? Am I gonna feel it on my skin? Like, why do I need it? So basically what a primer does is it preps your skin for makeup and it helps your makeup to go on more smoothly. It helps it sometimes to last longer. Different primers usually have different um, effects that they cause. Some are luminizing, some are oil controlling. Basically, they help to sort of correct for whatever your skin's like problem areas are. So that way when you put your foundation and concealer and everything on top of them, they are less likely to break up or to look patchy or dry or bad in any way. So I grabbed a whole bunch of different primers from my collection just to kind of show you guys some of the different kinds that there are. So there are um, silicone based primers like this Milani Prime Shield and these basically are for smoothing the skin, filling in pores, fine lines and giving your skin like a really flawless base for your foundation to go on top of. These are the, I would say they're not heavy, but these can feel the heaviest on your skin. Um, I don't prefer a silicone primer for every single day because I find that over time it can clog my pores. But if you have a special event, if you're going to a wedding or you're going out for the evening and you want your skin to look really photogenic and flawless, this kind of primer is really nice for that. If you're super oily like I am, the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector is like the best oil controlling primer I've ever tried. And this is something you don't necessarily even want to put all over your face. You just take a little dab and you um, pat it into the areas where you're oily and it really like saps down shine. It's crazy. Then there's something like the Becca Backlight Priming Filter and this is an illuminating primer. So this actually gives your skin like a little bit of a luminous glow that was way more than I needed to. So let me just show you guys what this looks like when you blend it into your skin. Do you see how that just has like a reflective shiny finish? And even when you put makeup on top of this, it's gonna still have that luminosity that kind of comes through the foundation. So it's gonna make your skin look really healthy and glowy and fabulous. Um, a lot of people with drier skin really like illuminating primers because their skin is lacking that natural shine that us oily people just, you know, luckily get to have. And then there are tinted primers like this one from Tarte. And this one um, adds just a teeny little bit of coverage and kind of helps to even out your skin tone. But it also, this particular one, um, is supposed to like make your makeup last longer, minimize the look of pores, yada, yada, yada. And the last order of primer that you may find is something like this Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer. This is a hydrating primer. So in a lot of ways, this is like a fancy moisturizer, and this is really great for people who have super dry skin, so that way their makeup doesn't like cling to dry patches. Um, and a primer like this isn't necessarily for making your makeup last longer or for like blurring out pores or anything like that. It's just creating a really nice hydrated base so that way your makeup goes on smoothly and doesn't like stick to any areas and look patchy. So basically you're just gonna apply your primer the same way you would apply a face moisturizer. I'm just gonna go in today with this one from Maybelline. This is the Master Prime by Face Studio Blur and Smooth Primer. So I'm just gonna take um, a little amount just a, just a little dab on my fingers. I'm gonna warm it up in my hands and then I'm just gonna massage it into my skin. Like I said, just the same way I would put on any kind of like face lotion. Now, truth be told, 
If you don't have a primer and you don't feel like you want to spend the money on one, that's totally okay. Just make sure that before you put your foundation on, your skin is really well moisturized. So the next is foundation, and this is probably the product that I get the most questions about. People who don't wear makeup are always sort of intimidated by foundation because it seems sort of like way more complicated um, to apply than it actually really is. Probably what makes foundation so scary is that it's actually kind of tricky to find a good foundation that both matches the color of your skin and that works for your skin type. So there's a whole boatload of different kinds of foundations out there. There are liquids, there are powders, there are creams. Most people usually like to stick with a powder or a liquid when they're starting out and that's kind of based on personal preference. Powder foundations, you just kind of like buff into your skin. They're pretty forgiving and pretty easy. But if you have dry skin, powder foundations can be a little bit more difficult to wear. Whereas a liquid foundation does take a little bit more time and effort to apply, but they can pretty much be used by anybody. So when you're gonna go pick out your foundation, there are a couple of things that you want to consider when you're looking through the different formulas. Number one is the coverage level. Usually foundations are either going to be light, medium, or full coverage. So a light coverage foundation is not really going to hide imperfections on your skin. It's not really going to cover up blemishes or birthmarks or anything like that. It's more just going to kind of even out your skin tone. It's going to look really natural. It's going to basically look like your skin, but just a little bit better. Whereas a medium coverage foundation will kind of cover some minor imperfections if you have like a very pigmented scar, birthmark, or pimple, it may not fully cover something like that, but it's going to definitely make your skin look more flawless than a light coverage foundation would, but it'll be a little bit more natural than a full coverage. And then your full coverage foundations are gonna like totally sort of mask out any imperfections on your skin. They're gonna make your skin look really, really super flawless, but at the same time, it's gonna be the least natural appearing because nobody's skin, unless you're like supermodel lucky, is gonna be, uh, completely and totally perfect. So once you know what kind of coverage level you're looking for, the second thing you're gonna be wanting to consider is what finish foundation do you want? Usually foundations range from being sort of like dewy and luminous to matte. So basically matte foundations have zero shine and usually people with oily skin really like matte foundations because their skin naturally produces a lot of shine and the matte kind of tries to cancel that out. Whereas a luminous or dewy foundation is going to have a more radiant, glowy appearance um, on the skin. It's gonna reflect more light. It's gonna look a little bit more shiny, but not necessarily greasy. So people who have super, super dry skin tend to really like dewy finish foundations. And then there are some that are kind of like a natural or satin finish, that's somewhere in between. So I grabbed a whole bunch of foundations from my collection just to kind of show you a few of the different ones that I have. On the matte side, like I have this Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation. This is sort of like a medium coverage, it's buildable, and this has a more matte finish. It's not super long wearing, but this is a nice everyday foundation. And another one I really like on the matte side is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. This one has a, let's see what it says, a medium coverage, and it's supposed to wear up to 24 hours, and it has a demi-matte finish. So even though it's mattifying, it looks natural and not super, super flat on the skin. Then there's something like this Milani Conceal and Perfect. This is a full coverage foundation, but it has a more satin finish to it. So it's kind of more in the middle. It's a little bit more on the like a dewier side. It's definitely not a matte foundation, but it's not really, really glowy. And then there's like this Rimmel Match Perfection Light Perfecting Radiance Sunscreen Foundation. So this one to me is much more dewy, much more radiant, but this has a more like light to medium coverage. So it is a little more natural, a little bit more sheer, but it's gonna make your skin look really, really glowy. So once you've figured out what kind of foundation you want to buy, the next thing you need to do is figure out which shade you are. So usually the best way to swatch foundations is to actually apply a stripe right along your jawline. You don't necessarily want to apply foundation to your arms or your hands to test out whether or not it's gonna match your face because like as you can see, my arm and my face are not the same color. My arms get a lot more suns, so my arms tend to be way more tan than my face. So ideally you want your foundation to match like the color of your neck and the color of your face. You want that line to blend pretty seamlessly between the two. Um, so what you wanna do is if you can get a tester for your foundation, like if you're in Sephora or Ulta, it's definitely best before you buy the product to actually swatch it on your face. If you have a drugstore foundation, 
In the US, unfortunately, you don't really have that luxury, but I would suggest trying to get as close as possible, taking it home, trying it on your face, and fortunately, most drugstores will let you return a product, so if it ends up not being right, you can always bring it back and exchange it for a different shade. So once you put your little stripe on, the key is to let it sit for at least five minutes and dry before you actually look at it under natural light. Foundations have a tendency to do something called oxidizing, which means that once they're exposed to the oxygen in the air, they can change colors. It tends to do with the types of pigments that are in the foundation and the way that they uh, respond to like that chemical process. So what happens sometimes is certain foundations, once they're on your skin and they're exposed to the air and they dry, they end up either turning way warmer or way darker than they originally were. So a foundation may look awesome on you the minute you apply it and then 10 minutes later you're like, I look like a Oompa Loompa. So definitely let it dry, take a look and make sure that it matches and looks pretty seamlessly blended into the color of your face and neck. So when you're picking out the color of your foundation, I mean, we all kind of have an idea of where we fall on the skin color spectrum, but one of the most important things to getting your foundation to match really well is to consider the undertone. So everybody's skin has sort of a natural like color that it sort of shifts towards. You might have heard warm undertones or cool undertones. For us light-skinned girls, that usually means that our skin has a more yellowish cast to it or a more pinkish cast to it. When your skin is deeper in complexion, the undertones are a little bit different. They may be more red, they may be more blue, but either way, what it comes down to is that more so than just your skin being light or dark, if the color is more yellow or red or pink and the foundation that you choose is a different color match, then when you put it on your skin, it might look very orange or it might look darker than it should and it's just not gonna look quite right on you. I personally have a very warm undertone to my skin, which means that it tends to look very yellow. Unfortunately, a lot of drugstore foundations tend to be very cool on the light end of the spectrum. So um, a lot of times if I'm looking for something that will be light enough to match my skin tone, it's way, way too pink. And if you think about, you know, color mixing from back in kindergarten, if you take something pink and you put it on someone's skin, who is yellow, it's gonna look orange. Once again, the dreaded Oompa Loompa face. Fortunately, if you go somewhere like Sephora and you're gonna shell out a lot of money for foundations, usually high-end brands have a very systematic way of naming their foundations and they have a lot of different undertones available in the entire spectrum of skin colors. So um, you might see something labeled with like W30 or G30, which means they're warm or golden in undertone. And then you might see something that's like C for cool undertones. And then there are also sometimes shades that are considered to be neutral. Um, and those mean that they're sort of like not really either. They're sort of like right in the middle. They don't really have a strong undertone to them. Those are sort of the most safe for those of you who aren't really sure which undertone you might be. So once you've got your perfect foundation, the next step is gonna be figuring out how to put it on your face. So there are two methods that I like to use to apply foundation, and these are kind of the most popular ways when you're using something that's a liquid or cream product. You can either apply it with a beauty sponge or you can use some kind of a brush. I personally like to use like any kind of a buffing brush that has a more domed top. Sometimes you'll find foundation brushes that are very flat looking and they're sort of more like for painting on your foundation. I find those much harder to blend the foundation in with. So if you're a newbie and you want to use a brush, stick to something that has a more like rounded or flat top to it and not something that is like um, an eyeshadow brush that the bristles are flat this way. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy Milani foundation here and I'm going to show you guys on one half of my face how I would apply this with a sponge and on the other half of my face how I would apply it with a brush. So I'm gonna start by just putting a pump on the back of my hand, and this is what I do every day. And then usually what I'll do is I will just basically dot the foundation onto my skin first. I sort of always like to um, apply it with my fingers a little bit to get it started, and then I'll do the blending with my tools. But I find that if I apply some of the foundation to my face first, then I actually lose less product unless it gets sucked up in the sponge or the brush that I'm using. Now this is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. This is really affordable and this is a really great beauty sponge if you're starting out and you want to learn how to use one of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the flat side of this, but if you had a regular um, domed brush or 
dome sponge. You could use any of the like long sides to do this process. With a sponge, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pat the foundation into your skin. You're never gonna rub it or smudge it in. You're just gonna pounce it. And you're gonna press with a good amount of pressure and work the foundation right into your skin. Now, I realized I did this beforehand and didn't say this. You want to make sure you dampen your sponge before you use it. So you want to run it under the sink, squeeze it out really good, and maybe, you know, like dry it in a towel for a second so it's not like sopping wet. But by dampening the sponge, that's going to help to give you a more natural finish and it's also going to help avoid the sponge soaking up all of the product. If you use a dry sponge, you're going to notice that most of the foundation ends up not being on your face anymore. It's going to be all sucked up and absorbed by the sponge itself. Then if I'm going to use a brush, I'm going to do a buffing motion to buff the product or sort of work it into the skin. So this is going to be a little bit different than what I did on the other side. So I almost like to use a circular motion. And also it's important to make sure that you take that foundation down underneath and along the jawline, work it down along the neck just so that everything looks blended. You don't want to have any of that harsh line of like makeup face where your face is one color and then your neck is another color and it looks totally unblended. So now that our foundation is on, the next step in our face makeup routine is going to be to apply concealer. So concealer basically is like a thicker version of foundation. It's meant to cover up darkness under our eyes, cover up blemishes, other imperfections in our skin. And since it is usually thicker and heavier and much more pigmented than foundation, you don't want to necessarily apply it all over your face because then you will look very unnatural and cakey in a way when people talk about like a cake face. So concealer is meant to apply, be applied to more like targeted areas of your face. So there are a lot of different kinds of concealer formulas out there. There are some that are in pots, they're in tubes, they're in little wands like this one. Um, and there are usually concealers that are either designed to be used all over your face or some of them are meant to specifically be used under your eyes. So usually the area under our eyes, the skin there is much more delicate and it can be prone to dryness and some people have um, a lot of darkness under their eyes. So usually people like to use a very brightening, hydrating concealer under their eyes to kind of cancel out all of those issues. Whereas concealer you might want to use on a blemish, you want something that's a little bit stiffer and drier because you want it to stay in place. Like you don't want to hydrate and make your pimples look more um, apparent and like be glowy and, and beaming. So one of my favorite under eye concealers is the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. This is a really, really super creamy, thick concealer, but it does an amazing job of hydrating and brightening under the eyes. So in order to apply under eye concealer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a little dab between my fingers, I'm gonna warm it up, and then I'm just gonna pat it in the area right underneath my eyes. Now to blend this in, we can either use the same sponge that we used before, or we can use a brush. So on the sponge side, I'm gonna show you guys how I would do this. I'm gonna take the pointed end of this because it's gonna let me get in these tight areas. And the same as I did my foundation, I'm just gonna pat and pounce and blend this concealer into my skin. You can also take it up on the lid a little bit. This can act as actually a really good primer for your eyeshadow. And then if you prefer to use a brush, I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush. And just like I did with my foundation, I'm gonna use light circular strokes to buff the concealer into my skin and I can take it up onto the lid. Now to conceal any redness or other imperfections in my face, I'm gonna use my Tarte Shape Tape. This is one of my favorite concealers right now. This one's actually also really good for under the eyes. So I'm just gonna take a little bit down my nose here. I get redness like right around the crevices of my nose. And a little spottiness on my chin there. And I'm just gonna use this sponge to pack this in. I find that if you're concealing um, on a blemish, the sponge technique actually works the best because you don't necessarily want to 
um, diffuse the coverage of the concealer, you want to really just blend it gently and like keep it right in the place where the blemish is. And then the last step in our face makeup routine is going to be to set down our makeup with powder. So powder does a couple of things for us. One, it locks our makeup in so that way it does not move anywhere, especially when you're using liquid and cream formulas. You don't want as the day goes on and you're warm and you're sweating that makeup to like melt and move and slip around. And the other thing that it does is help to minimize shine and control oil throughout the day. So if you're someone who's really, really greasy, putting that layer of powder on top will help to control the shine and keep you from getting extra oily throughout the day. And there are a lot of different options when it comes to powders as well. You can get loose powders like this one from Kat Von D, or you can get pressed powders like this one from NYX. And then you can get powders that are translucent, or you can get powders that have coverage or color to them. So usually you want to consider what your needs are with powder. All you want to do is lock your makeup down in place. You probably want to go with something translucent that's not going to add extra coverage because that might make your makeup look a little bit more cakey. If you were going in with a very sheer foundation, you might be able to layer over a powder that has some color to it because that will add some extra coverage to your face for you in the areas that you need it. So one of the techniques that everybody's really into right now is called baking your under eyes, which basically means you put on a really thick layer of powder on top of your concealer and your under eyes and you let it sit for a minute and it helps to really set the concealer in place and then you brush away the excess powder. So if that's something you're interested in doing, you need a translucent loose powder and you just take your um, dampened, dampened beauty sponge and you're basically just gonna press the powder right in your under eye area. And you're gonna look crazy, but that's okay, cause it's not gonna stay this way. Now for me today, since I use pretty full coverage makeup, I'm just gonna set, wanna set down the whole thing with the translucent powder. So I really like this one from NYX. This is the HD Finishing Powder. And to powder my face, I'm just gonna use a big fluffy brush. This is the e.l.f. Complexion Brush. And what you're basically gonna do is just take the powder and you're gonna pat it onto your skin. I don't really like to brush my powder on because otherwise you're gonna disturb the foundation underneath. You just want to lightly pat a layer of powder to lock your makeup into place. And then you can also go in and gently brush away if there's any excess powder from when you patted it on with the um, sponge. You can just gently wipe a little bit of it away. And then this is what you have. So I'm going to take a minute just to finish putting on the rest of my makeup and then I'm going to come right back. And we're back! This is my completed makeup look. I think it came out really super pretty. I am all about these bold, bright lips for summertime. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope it answered some of the questions that you have about these kinds of products and how to use them. If you still have other things you aren't sure about, definitely post it in the comments down below and let me know. I would love to hear from you and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that way you will be uh, clued in when I post the rest of the videos from this series. I think the next installment is going to be blush, bronzer, and highlight. So if that sounds good to you, and definitely make sure you are subscribed. And if you enjoyed this video and you like the idea of this series, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate your support so much. It helps me out a ton. And thank you as always for chatting beauty with me today. I will see you in my next video. Bye. But I have decided to be a champion today for you guys. I put on my makeup and I sat down because I really wanted to film this little unboxing for you. I got my Ipsy bag and my Sephora Play in and I just wanted to film a quick little video to show you what I got.